Yeah, I just want to say how excited we are to be uh, in this opportunity right now. When we put this group together, uh, we thought we had a chance to be here. And I give our guys all the credit in the world for continuing to buy in and be very professional throughout this entire season, regardless of the circumstance. Whether we won, whether we lost, we generally prepared the same way. And these guys have been extremely coachable, and I'm really excited for them to have this opportunity. All right, we'll open it up uh, to our far left on the front, Coach. Uh, Fred, do you think the, just an opinion, just, does the uniqueness of your systems maybe give you an advantage in a, in a situation like this, your systems on offense and defense? Well, I don't know about that. I, I think at this time of year, obviously, it's the, the importance is how your team is playing and, and how, they're, how they're hanging in there together uh, when you've been through as many battles as we have. And I know this, we're playing a hot team. We're playing one of the hottest teams in the country right now that came off a five-game winning streak. And their loss, their lone loss in that stretch to Florida was maybe as good as 20 minutes as they played all year. They had a 20-point lead in the first half against, uh, against Florida in that game. So I know we're playing a hot team. Uh, that being said, I really do like the way we're playing. I think our guys have done a great job of sharing the ball. Uh, we found the right guy, whoever has had it going. And uh, this team has been very selfless all season long. So, you know, we've had a good week of prep. I'm, I'm sure A&M has had a great week of prep as well. And you've got two teams that are playing really good basketball uh, squaring off tomorrow. So, you know, again, it's, you know, we've all got our unique uh, systems. A&M is a very unique system on both sides of the ball. And I know this, whatever uh, offense they're running, we have to be tied together. You know, defensively, we've been pretty darn good with the exception of the Illinois game. We had a lot of miscues in that game. And uh, offensively, I know we're going to have to play with pace. Whatever defense they are in, uh, we just have to go out and continue to share it and continue to move. And, and we've had the benefit of playing a couple teams that have played multiple defenses. Michigan played a lot of them. And you know, I was really pleased with how uh, we moved in that game, whatever defense they were in. And that's what it's going to take uh, for us tomorrow to have a chance to win this game. In front of us. Hey, Coach, uh, Travis Brown at the Bryan College Station Eagle. I know uh, Kise was uh, recruited by Coach Billy Gillespie. What memories, things stick out to you as part of that recruitment with Coach, working with Coach Gillespie? Is there any part of his um, coaching that you see he, uh, Kise develop? Well, as, as you know, it's not easy playing for Billy. He's, uh, he's a very demanding coach, and, and he does a phenomenal job. So the fact that Kese played under Billy, I think, is a huge benefit for us. And I remember talking to Billy in the recruiting process and just talking about how he enjoyed coaching Kese, and uh, he loved him. He said, the thing I like most about Kese is comp his competitive spirit. He said, I can yell at him, I can get on him, and he never snaps back at me. He's just got a smile on his face. I said, Coach, it's because he doesn't know what the hell you're talking about. He can't understand you. And, um, you know, but as he's gone on, uh, you know, he had a benefit also. There was a Japanese trainer at Ranger, and that helped him learn the language a little bit. And then when he got to Nebraska, he got a girlfriend, and that really helped uh, his language. So he's, uh, listen, the thing with Kasey, uh, I'm so proud of his growth over the last couple of years. Uh, his first year at Nebraska, there were some games he just couldn't play. Uh, he just got overwhelmed uh, by physicality. Now he doesn't back down from anybody. I don't care who it is. Uh, he's going to go out there. He's going to give you an effort. Uh, he's going he's to make contact with you. And the way that he is guarded, his ability to create separation has been absolutely phenomenal. So, you know, I'm just proud of him for everything that he's done to make him the type of player that he is right now. And obviously, there's a lot of attention. He's getting a lot of it. It's important, as I've talked about with the team, to really try to limit the distractions this week. You know, there's so much noise, you know, social media with everything going on. Uh, you, the team that limits those distractions a lot of times are the teams that move on at this time of year. So it's important. You know, we love it. He's getting a lot of attention. But again, he's always had that. He's played in the world stage. He helped his national team at Japan accomplish something that has never been done before. And that's what we're trying to accomplish here at Nebraska. Next three, you're over here, back, middle, front. Go ahead. Hey, Coach, Jonah Dillon, Commercial Appeal. Kind of off that, when, when you were recruiting him from Ranger, what, what were the things that stood out that he was doing at that level and saying, okay, let's see how we can bring this up to the new level? Yeah, shooting from half court. I think that was the thing that, that I liked. I mean, he shot 44% on shots over 25 feet. And he just is, he's always had that range. And the thing that I loved was his confidence. You know, you see him out there playing with a joy. You see him out there playing with a confidence and a swagger. And that's why he's able to play against more athletic, more physical players is because he plays with that drive and he plays with that joy and, uh, and confident 
uh, swagger every time he steps on the court. And it's not just games. I mean, if you saw him at practice, he's the same guy. And that helps set the tone for our guys every day. And, you know, he's just been, he's been a joy uh, to coach. I've said this multiple times. He's going to go down as one of my all-time favorites. Go ahead. James Fletcher from On3. You talked about distractions earlier. What has it been like for you and your staff having to balance the transfer portal opening up this week and then prepping for the NCAA tournament and, and the overlap that's been there? Yeah, it's not a lot of fun, I'll be honest with you. It, it's, it's, I know, a big part of the job, and you have to be on top of everything early in the process or else you're not going to have a chance. And, you know, as you want to be preparing, obviously, 24-7, uh, but you have to be on top of that. And our staff does a good job with it. And, you know, I think there's, what, 500 names in there already. So, yeah, yeah, you have to be ready for it. But at this time of year, you know, for us, for me, it's all about doing everything I can to prepare the team and put a game plan together to give us a chance to beat, uh, again, one of the top teams in the country here this, these past six weeks. And, uh, you know, we'll worry about that. You know, when this journey ends, hopefully uh, not for a while, we'll, uh, we'll get on top of it. But, you know, our staff is doing a good job right now keeping everybody in the loop on what's happening on that front uh, at the same time staying very focused on the task at hand. From in front to our right. Hey, Fred. Tom Chateau, Omar Walt Herald. Um, you, you've obviously had a, a lot of success on the NCAA tournament stage. Um, is there some secret to winning the NCAA tournament game? Well, it's uh, you, you got to be tied together. You, you have to fight through adversity. This is the biggest thing at this time of year is you have to find a way to stay together when things aren't going your way. And, you know, I can promise you tomorrow night at some point, uh, that's going to happen to us. And what will define our success is how we handle that adversity. Um, you know, I'm confident our group has been through a lot. We've been through a lot of highs and lows. And I do think we're playing as good as we played all year right now. So hopefully we handle that well. Uh, we did not handle it great at Ohio State. You know, that was the one time I thought that we really kind of got away from it. Um, but we learned from it. I think we've grown and, and gotten better. Um, you know, defense and rebounding this time of year is critical. And we're playing the best offensive rebounding team in the country. And they are so good at getting into your body and hitting you first. And, you know, if we allow that to happen, it's going to be a long night. You know, they average almost 18 offensive rebounds a game. And that is a crazy number. 44% of their offensive, uh, of their misses, they get back. Their offensive rebounding percentage is historically good. So, you know, for us, we have to find a way to battle them. Um, we've got to guard the ball. And we have to finish off possessions. To our left for the next two starting up front. Fred, we have got Robin Wash at Husker Online. We haven't got a chance to talk to you since you got the contract extension. I guess, uh, for one, what does that mean to you? And then considering where things were just for you uh, a couple of years ago to have that long-term stability now, how much of an advantage is that going forward, building this program? Well, I, I appreciate the leadership believing in us. And, you know, that's first and foremost. I, I've talked a lot about how much we've loved our time in Lincoln. And for me, with our family's ties, you know, with both grandfathers working at the university. One is the head coach for nine seasons in, in basketball. Uh, the other one for a sociology professor for 30 years. We spent a lot of time in Lincoln growing up. My parents are graduates of Southeast and also University of Nebraska. My dad got his PhD at Nebraska. I was born in Lincoln, so we absolutely love it. It's kind of cool how life has come full circle and, uh, you know, very likely my career is going to end uh, in Lincoln. So, you know, I just, I'm really appreciative of the belief, and uh, we're going to do everything we can to make this a consistent uh, goal for this team to be playing at this time of year on this stage. And there's no reason in the world we shouldn't have that with the facilities, with the fan support. Um, we absolutely love it. You know, I'm appreciative of my staff getting taken care of, and you know, hopefully we're here doing special things for a long time. And uh, you know, again, but it goes back to the leadership. I haven't met Troy since he got the job. I, I know I talked about this. He used to ref my high school games. Uh, sounds like he's going to be out there today. So I'm looking forward to getting together with him and hopefully building it together uh, with a guy that I think has great leadership skills and uh, also the president as well. So you know, just really excited about it. And uh, you know, hopefully we we'll do some some great things here long term. Our last two will come on the aisle, then back up front. Joseph Meyer, Dale and Nebraska. Um, you know, Wade Taylor had some pretty high praise for you guys, um, but in terms of slowing him down and, and the opportunity to go against a great player like that, um, you know, what, what's your approach to him? Yeah, he, he is playing at a, a, a unbelievable level. I mean, preseason player of the year, and certainly that's how he's playing, um, you know, right now. But his degree of difficulty on his shots you know you see those early shots that he made in the SEC tournament pulling up from 28 29 feet on the first couple minutes of the game 
and just setting the tone over length, contested. Uh, if he's hitting shots like that, you know, it's going to be a tough game to win. And, you know, that's, that's who he's been here these last couple of weeks. But it's their, it's their whole team. I mean, their guards are playing at a, uh, a high, high level. Their bigs know uh, their roles. Uh, Garcia's ability to, he has 153 offensive rebounds. That's incredible. We think Jawan Gary's a good offensive rebounder. He has 61. So, you know, he, these guys pose a lot of problems. And the way Taylor is playing right now, he's the head of the snake. And it starts with him. And I'm just so impressed with uh with with his overall game and how this team is playing as a whole we're really gonna have to be on point to give ourselves a chance to win this game last one up front yep brian christopherson with husker 24 7. just a nuts and bolts question here uh fred i i assume cj's good to go and also eli um could he you know play if you had to play him yeah cj is uh he's been back on the practice court it's it's good to have him uh back he struggled a little bit that first day uh kind of had him in and out but he's been fine uh the last couple since we've been uh down here in uh in memphis uh eli practiced for the first time two days ago and he was in for about half the reps uh today he he was out there a little bit he still got some soreness in that ankle but he will dress he will dress tomorrow and, and he will be available if we need him Coach, with that, we will let you go. Thank you for your time and good luck tomorrow. Thank you.